Welcome to Action City Church Silver Spring. You have tuned in to Action Talk, where we will discuss and explore topics and events concerning the Christian's walk for young adults, both married and single. Thank you for joining in. And on behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor Matthew Teta, it is our prayer that as you join us online, you will gain an understanding of God's purpose and will for your life. Welcome to Action Talk. Thank you for coming back with us again. We are going to continue with our discussion concerning spiritual warfare. I thank God for all the uh, group that we have today. If you will quickly, just give your names. My name is Kwame Ashin Chapel member. Devanya. Samuel. Marcy. Erica. And I'm Pastor Reg. We're here today to continue talking. We, last time we met, we talked about spiritual warfare. We talked about one of the uh, chief spirits uh, that the devil uses, the one called fear. And we talked about how fear brought torment. We talked about a lot of things re revolving around fear. And we used the scripture, that introductory scripture. We're going to read that again. Devonia, if you would, please read that. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 13. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 13. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the, the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Thank you. So, so we talked. We talked about that, and we 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 talked about demonstrations of having to stand, and we talked about the fact that the fight that we're fighting against is a fight with the devil himself and his agents, and so we 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 left off talking about that about the wrestling against the spiritual wickedness. So, um, uh, I just wanted to. Uh, if we would continue on that, starting off first about putting on this whole armor of God. And can you can can any of you all tell me uh, about this whole armor? How this whole armor, when people say, well, what is this thing called armor? What, what are we talking about? Someone. I, I believe the armor, is, uh, armor of God is the sword of the spirit. It's the word of God. It, 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 How do I put on the word of God? You read it. You meditate it. You read the word of God, you meditate, you marinate yourself in it. Mm -hmm. Say, um, meditation of my heart and the word of my mouth be acceptable in that sight. How do you meditate? It's what you read. And we left off speaking about fear. And Pastor left off, um, Pastor spoke about how you can overcome it. But in order to meditate, this is a church of prayer. We must bring what we are to. And in order to be powerful, and that's why I was going to let her know. Is you have to keep saying it every time you are praying. It doesn't matter. Say Jesus prayed the same prayer three times a day. It doesn't matter how many times till that thing manifests. A time is gonna come. You go. Oh, I'm not supposed to be afraid of that because you have overcome it. I don't. You not be aware. You even went over a bridge. That's why I was trying to let you know because what you are dealing with, most of us have dealt with. Fear is like a common thing for the enemy to use against us. But in the book of Timothy, he said, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a summer in the name of Jesus. I don't have a spirit of fear. If you say it more than 100 times, before you know it, yeah, am I supposed to be? Like, yeah. it, because you become it. Yeah. And if I become power, then there's no room for fear. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? So the, the, what I was going to ask you to know before we end is, the remedy for that solution, what well, remedy solution is to meditate and confess it. Every so it doesn't matter who is telling you don't do this. It's you. What works for you might be different than what works for me. But I know this for the truth because it's the word of God. And the, the, the Bible said the word of God is two edges sword. When it's sent forth, it has accomplished what it's sent to do. After you are, we say it for so much, you don't even send it no more. It chases you. Yeah. And when the fear is coming, there, there's a war. You're a military guy. And the war zone, there's called something intercept. When the enemy shoot, you can intercept. 
And that's what the Spirit will do for you. And you just go by your business. So that's another way of overcoming the forces of darkness. That's good. That's good right there. You know, uh, something that you said that it leaped in my spirit was that uh, you said that uh, after we meditate on the word, because we need to make sure that uh, what God's word says about that issue. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're meditating on the word about, he said, God has not given you the spirit of fear. And the question may have been, well, well, if God didn't give it to me, why do I have it? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, first of all, don't take possession of it. If somebody come in your house that don't belong in your house, what do you do? You get rid of them. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you evict them. And if you don't have enough authority to do it, you get more authority that agree with you and get them out of there. So, and then, and the word of God is our authority. And so, uh, 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 we, 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 we kick it out. We find, we, we speak words over it, life words over it that we've gotten from God's word that tells us that this thing is not so. And, and because, because we speak in God's word over it, it's not us no longer speaking it. It's God speaking to him. Remember, we were made in the image of God. We talked about that. We're all made in the image of God. And when we load ourselves up with the word of God, the devil sees the image of God speaking the word of God to him on that matter. And then what the Bible says, if we submit ourselves unto God, resist the devil, resist him what? With the word. What happened? We don't run. He runs. So we have to continue to put the word on him, put the word on him. I think it's important that we think about the word of God that we're speaking. Mm -hmm. Because if I know that I am a child of God, that means I have power, I have authority over my enemies. I am, um, I have glory, you know, there's light in my life, there's no darkness in my life. Mm -hmm. So if I have this attitude and God is presenting me with some, some kind of warfare that I'm presented with, right? And I say, for example, let's say um, somebody approaches me and there is a aggressiveness mm -hmm. and I want to react and I'm, and I'm entitled because I have every right to defend myself if you are accusing me or you're coming at me with a bad attitude. And I want to say, well, you need to step back because you don't know who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's not... Even though, okay, okay, so that's not the word of God, even though I can have an attitude in myself like, you know what, this person shouldn't be approaching me like this because I didn't do anything to them. Mm -hmm. But what I say out of my mouth can sound like I am being aggressive towards them because I'm saying, don't come to me this way. You don't have a right to talk to me this way. You don't have, you know, so I'm, I'm sounding like I'm trying to argue or go back and forth with them. So to make sure that we are using the word of God correctly when we're fighting our enemies or fighting against any um, wickedness, we have to still ex ex show love. Mm -hmm. So if I say, if somebody comes to me and they're confronting me and I feel like I want to defend myself, I need to do it in love because the word of God is also love. Now, so, wait a minute, wait a minute now. You am know, I clear? You understand what I'm saying? I, I understand that a little bit, but I got a, I got, I got a situation here that I'm dealing with, and uh, uh, I don't know if it's time to put love on this. If I, if I just use, you use an example, I, t I tell my, my, my children, I say, if somebody break in my house, <laughs> and I got to defend my family, am I going to be defending in love, or I'm going to turn on a different mode right now? <laughs> <laughs> because you see, see, and and, and and I said it kind of, kind of laughing at, laughing a little bit, but really seriously, uh, as believers, I can show love to the enemy by defeating him. I love him enough to defeat him because he don't really need to be in my life. So I love him enough to defeat the enemy. And so um, many times when we deal with the enemy, the enemy, we have to speak the language that the enemy hears. This, and a lot of Christians miss it right here. What I just said right there, is, it's got a lot in it, but people miss it. Speak the language that the enemy hears. If you, if I, I use this, um, 
if you are in a situation and someone is beating you, physically beating you, you got to speak the language that they hear. They don't hear, oh, help me, please save me. They don't hear that. But they may hear, if you got a baseball bat, they may hear if you react a little differently. They may hear if you got something that's stronger than they are. So when we speak to the enemy, we speak to them in love, but we speak to him with the word of God that addresses it where they are, and we stand on that thing. That's why we use this scripture right here. Having done all in that evil day, we stand. That means you're going to take your territory, and you're going to say, devil, you're not, you're not going to occupy my space. You're not. We get aggressive. We get aggressive. We have to. We have to. As believers, if we don't, we'll be pushed over. And many believers are like that today. They're pushed over because they're like, well, you know, but and, and I, I can love you. I can love you from afar, too. I say that, I say that in light of uh, a lot of people who go through, especially an area of abuse. They go through a lot of abuse where, where they get abused a lot. And they stay there because of love, which really is another whole topic they're going to right there that we're not going to hit today. One day we will, but not today. So uh, um, go ahead. Somebody walk me, come in here with me. Oh. Erica was saying uh, confronting someone or trying to confront someone, the thing is not, might not be a godly way. Right. But how do you do it? Yeah. That was the, that was your, uh, the Bible said, do not the sun go down under your, with your anger. When the sun go down, you're still angry. That's a sin. You, so you always want to see the dimension of God, what will contribute to a sin. In the eyes of God. So not that I can yell at him. He's my friend. He do something I can yell at him. Do I go home and still meditate at 11 o'clock at night? Then that becomes a sin. Yeah. There you go. So it depends how the situation is. You do your best to come out of it after you confront it. So that's my take on it. That's good. All right. I think I remember the word. So we, us Christians, we always talk about meditate on the word of God day and night. So the world right now, what we consider as meditation is sitting quiet and have your probably I don't like you know what what do we what do we mean as Christians when we say meditate on the word of God day and night? Meditation on meditation um I would say that's not necessarily means um quiet moment. Quiet I mean but Putting yourself in the scripture, reading the scripture, and putting yourself in the scripture. Being having, it, it can be your quiet time, whatever. But putting yourself in the scripture. So the, the Bible said He has not given us the spirit of fear, and you feel fear coming in your way. Fear have no. Fear is not supposed to be in your jurisdiction. You have to allow it to come in your jurors because whatever has not been given if, if if whatever you receive it means you have received it it have been given and you have received it but god said he are not giving you the spirit of fear but he have given so you you unless you receive it you will not it's, it's not going to have dominion over your jurisdiction and light fear comes from the kingdom of darkness light cannot wherever there is light fear will not be there or fear will not have no place so the word the word is 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 also your lamp and your light for now and you see how light, light you throw light light go far that's your future it's a lamp and it's a it's a light the lamp is now it, it shows you your you know, your life now. The light, it throws to your future. So it means now or my future. F fear is from the kingdom of darkness. And anything that has not been planted by God has, has to be uprooted. So the lamb, the light that is in my way, that is showing me the way. Anything from the kingdom of darkness will have no place. And that's what the word does. You meditate. The word of God is what will give. It's like your, your manual. You meditate upon it. It shows you. It shows you your way. 
you so most of the time when we put the word aside and it's like buying a chair from ikea or wherever they have the instructions you have to follow the instructions but most of the time we feel like okay we know so we put the manual away we try to figure it out put it together ourselves you will get to the end and then you find out that you left a little screw somewhere that you were supposed to, you, 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 you almost, you're almost done and the thing is crooked. Now you have to go back, look for the manual. You probably trash it with the box. Now you have to go back, look for it, read it, and then you figure your mistakes. That's how, so without, without the word that will throw light, we will keep hitting the wall and bouncing back, keep hitting and bouncing back. So the, 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 the word is supposed to be a lamp. The lamp guides us. It, the lamp can only go far, but the light it goes this, like it goes that far. And the light, the, the word of God, is our guidance. It's, it it helps us in everything that we do. So fear will have no place when there's light because it's from the kingdom of darkness. And anything the light cannot, darkness cannot exist. exist. So this this thing called meditation. This thing. I'm go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> so in the book of, um, I believe it's 2 Timothy, he, it, he tells us to study to show thyself approved. And when we speak about meditation, as Marcy was saying, most people think of sitting quiet, hands, legs crossed, arms folded. But meditation goes beyond that. It is when you when you look and define the word, it means to break down. And when we want to meditate on the scriptures and the word of God, we have to first look at the scripture and you want to dissect it. If you have to go get a dictionary, look at take a look at what it's telling you to do. If it's saying, for instance, in Ephesians chapter six and chapters 10 to 13, He's telling us to put on the whole armor. You may want to get your dictionary and say, well, what is armor? When you define armor, um, you have to first understand what it is that the word of God is telling you to do. Because if I'm just reading it and if I don't have an understanding of it, I can't apply it. I can't put the practical, the practicality to it That's good. in order to be effective. And it's not. We have to know our enemy, but we also have to know how to fight the enemy that we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm dealing with the spirit of fear in one point in my life, and then the enemy is coming at me with a spirit of unforgiveness, I'm not going to fight those two enemies the same way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the only way to get the correct understanding of how to effectively war against the enemy i need to meditate on the scriptures which is reading them rehearsing them daily you know breaking it down what does this mean to me how can i apply it to my life and that's the way we will overcome because we will be tested you know and that's why timothy in the book of timothy it's telling us study study when we're faced with an examination if you go into the classroom and you have not studied the material, nine times out of ten, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. That's yeah. good. You know, you know uh, yeah. that's good, Devonia. And uh, thank you for that because when we look at how Jesus approached this thing, and Jesus, Jesus approached it with Peter. Uh, he came to Peter, and basically right before he got ready to leave, he said, Peter, uh, whom do men say that I am? And Peter, as a, like Peter is, all bold and everything, and he had some things to learn about this thing called the spiritual, spiritual life. That, uh, uh, in fact, it, he was opening up to him this thing about this thing about spiritual life. And he said, "Thou art the Christ, Son of the Living God." He says, he said to him, said, "Look, flesh and blood didn't reveal this thing." So, so when we study the word and we meditate on it, what we're doing is providing a pavement almost like a road for the Holy Spirit to walk into our lives with. And in, as he walk upon that road of knowledge that we've gained from studying the word, we then give him by meditating on it the license to reveal to us. See, he won't reveal. Uh, uh, you can go to somebody who's a scholar with the Bible, who's unsaved. He won't reveal to them mm -hmm. the same thing that he'll reveal to someone with no degree 
who will meditate up, who will meditate upon the word and trust what God is saying to be his word and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to him. God will show you things in the word that no school could ever teach you. And what it does is it opens you up to a whole new, in fact, it gives you a, a whole new perspective on how God operates. And so we'll see, we'll see God operate ways, and it'll cause you to do things that, you, that normal folks wouldn't do. Like, give it right now. We're dealing with this thing called uh, virus, this virus, COVID-19 or whatever it's called. And see, people are dealing with it from a natural standpoint. But we got some men and women of God that's pushing the church to deal with it from a spiritual standpoint. And because of that, people don't see and understand how the church is doing what they're doing. Why are you talking about prayer? It's not time to pray. Um, but unfortunately, it is the time to pray. Because we need, we need to pave that road so the Holy Ghost can come in and give revelation. Because God's going to give revelation to somebody, some man, some woman, somewhere. And they're going to go, oh, look. This work. Yeah. And this now is the answer. And they're going to tell the rest of the world, and the world going to see it. But it's going to come by God giving revelation to somebody, God dropping a word of knowledge into them. So for us as believers, we, in this spiritual warfare we're in, we meditate on it because we want to give God the opportunity. And Jesus said this. He says, he said that, he says, I'm going to leave the spirit, and he shall, he shall guide you into what? All truth. He's going to teach us. And he's going to bring revelation to us by teaching us all truth. The Holy Ghost does that for us. So as we read the word and as we spend time in the word, what we're doing is giving room to the devil, uh, uh, to the Holy Ghost to come and reveal to us. So when we're dealing with the devil, when, a, when the devil brings us up, the Holy Spirit says, wait a minute, I've seen this before. You, you, don't, you don't understand this. See, I've seen it before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, and somebody said, well, uh, the Holy Ghost said, don't go with them. I've seen this before. Don't go with them. Your friend, but that's my friend. No, don't go with them. And so the Lord tells you to cut them off. And you have to cut them off. And why? Because the Holy Ghost told you to. Yeah. And, then, and then maybe a year or so later, you hear that something went wrong. And because you did what the Holy Ghost told you to do, you, didn't, you, miss, you don't, he, he don't have to uh, give you every detail about it. He just says, no, that, you know, they're not, no, that's not, he ain't the one for you. No, he ain't the one for you. She ain't the one for you. And you just let it go. My wife, I, I'm going to share this here. Uh, my wife and I were ministering to a couple, getting ready for marriage, and we were doing some premarital counseling. And um, we listened, we listened. And, and this man and this woman, they, they had issues that needed to be addressed. And so, um, uh, this, uh, we had another couple where the, the wife was in America, but the husband was overseas somewhere in another country, and she, and saw, she hadn't seen him that much. So we, we told him, we didn't believe this was God's war hand for you to get married. Well, that didn't go good at all. <laughs> How could you tell us that? Well, if it doesn't line up with the word of God. And so if you, if, if you deal with something that don't line up with the word of God, it wasn't a year later that person was crying because of what had happened. Sometimes the Holy Ghost will give you a revelation. Or sometimes you show you right out something's not right. And so when it deals with our, with our lives, that's what meditating on the Word gives you, uh, gives a door open for the Holy Ghost to speak to you. That's who you want speaking to you. Because when the Holy Ghost speaks to you about an issue, you get the real answer. You know, uh, we, got, we, we stuck in these flesh bodies. So we can give you an answer, but sometimes our answers are not quite. Yeah. Oh, it goes to give you just the answer you need. That's, right. yeah. That's it. For example, when I began this journey, personal experience, talking about it, um, book of John 8, 7 says, Who among you would that sin? Cast the first stone. Mm -hmm. She mentioned how do you deal with unforgiveness. And uh, I was telling someone that scripture Jesus said to that woman, it wasn't about the woman. It was about Jesus. They came to accuse him, the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. But when you read it, you can use it as forgiveness. But if you don't have the sermon, it was about him. They came in to accuse him. Moses said, whoever commit, commit this sin shall be stoned to death. But what do you say, Rabbi? 
You understand? So I had a situation in business that didn't go well. And laying on bed, you know, I was talking to my mother. My father has passed away. My father, for example, Pastor Reggie, told me I used to talk to him. He never talked. He just looked at me and said, you do well. <laughs> but now I'm talking to my mother. I'm reading the scriptures. That's why I said meditate. And because my father never talked, I always have that sense, what would he say if he was alive? But my mom is talking a lot. And I'm like, he's dead, but I'm picturing him. Like, he was always quiet and said, be careful. That's all his words are. Oh, I don't do people. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I opened my mouth and I said, 40 years, mother. 40 years in the ministry. She, you know, and all you can tell me is revenge. What happened to the scripture? That said, who among you would have sinned? Because the first time she hung up the phone. Mm. And uh, the way I put it in my language is like, and so it was left with me in the scriptures to deal with the situation. Wow. And I chose the path of the spirit. And the situa many situations has come. And she said, don't do that. And the spirit says, this is the end result. And I will follow the spirit. And she will say, hey. Now she said, hey. Uh, feel like I'm dreaming. You know? <laughs> so it's a place. But how do you bring yourself? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's allow yourself and when we were talking i brought that up in the portal because i was dealing with it in the way i was in the bedroom and i'm remembering the red notes jesus every time jesus spoke in the scriptures yeah. i was not just i was just preaching jesus as mm -hmm. sunday school and all this mm -hmm. and then i'm thinking about the spirit that she's advising you from the flesh the son and the mother but if you want to go with me take this word and go with it yeah. and every time the moment you can act like that Anytime somebody sin against you, you have, have, you have obtained a power against sin, uh, unforgiveness, offenses. Jesus said, whoa, the offenses will come. Mm -hmm. So every time offense will come, that word is like a, what, a rhema. It just mm -hmm. flows through because you have practiced it. Right. Yeah. And that's how you gain, you prevail, you win. When you can stand on it, when it don't feel right. Yeah. It doesn't taste right to them. It doesn't feel right to anybody. They, but you stand on it. And you become alone. But at that moment, it might take two years to get there. But when you get there, and when I was talking to her in that situation, she's like, hey, I feel like I'm dreaming. And I was like, it, it, it's different. Yeah. And after, that's why I start talking like that. After you obtain that, you don't worry about who is standing because it's a spirit. And you meditate on it. It, it, it that's, say, as far as the heaven are mm -hmm. above the earth. The spirit will show you something that you'll be amazed. It's not about money and cars. Listen, that's why David prayed. Take away everything, yeah. but don't take away this one thing from me. Yeah. There's a path. It's only for the knowledge of the holy. And unless you follow it, it's not the knowledge of man. It's not, Archbishop always said, he always makes a decision that creates controversy. Mm -hmm. By the end, he wins. Mm -hmm. Because he don't follow man. So, yeah. Well, you were talking about that. I think Eric and I... Um, actually had a conversation like that yesterday and I was telling her that it might be different for everybody but for me I feel like whenever I make decision it might it might be something that people don't want me to do or people think is wrong but when I have the peace when I have that peace like sometimes I will say or do something and everybody around me might look at it like Marcy that's wrong for you to do that or for you to say that but immediately when I have the peace of God in me even though everybody around me, like you say, your mother was advising you based on her flesh, a lot of times the people around you, they want you to react based on the flesh of their flesh, but when you get to a point in your life where you believe that you don't go by the flesh, but you go by the word of God and you go by the spirit, where you could do something or say something and everybody around you think it's wrong, but the, but, the, but the spirit of God led you to do that. And I was telling her yesterday that whenever I do that, I always have a peace. It's like I just feel at peace, like I did the right thing. But um, I was just supporting that. But I'm, <laughs> I just wanted to say, when you, earlier you guys said, um, I think you and Erica, um, you and Devonia, you, um, Devonia said you have to know or know what you're fighting. You have to know what you're fighting and where you're going. So sometimes a lot of us Christians, we don't know what we're fighting. We're just on this whole Christianity journey. We don't know what we're fighting. 
So when you so what if you are in a point where you really don't know what you're fighting? Not like you don't know that the demons are coming against you, but you really don't know what you're fighting. You don't know. Okay. <laughs> Can I say something real quick? Go ahead. Because that goes back to the internal warfare, right? Because when God reveals the conditions of your heart and he reveals some things about you that you don't want to accept because it's ugly, you know? Yeah, but sometimes you, it's not really about you. Hold though. on, hold on. Let me, it, it, but a lot of times it is. It is because if, if, if you, if God shows you your enemy, and that enemy is a reflection of the condition of your heart, right? And you say, oh, no, 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 mm -mm. I'm not dealing with that. That's, that's, that's somebody else, or that is because of somebody else. Like, you may start blaming other people. Your pride shows up, right? You're in denial, okay? So that's, that's warfare because you don't even want to see the condition of your heart. And then how can you how can you win that battle? You can't. Because you don't God is showing you the opponent and you don't want to see it. You don't so you're not going to ever know the opponent or understand the opponent to fight it. So I understand what you're saying, right? Like all right, let me let me take this person on. Like, I've been having, for a long time, I've been having a dream about somebody. They always try to attack me. But because they are so close to me, I feel like I'm always, like, in denial. Like, it can't be this person. It can't be this person every time. And I'm like, so one day I was sitting, I said, God, why do you keep showing me this person's face? And it's not in a good way. And this person is, like, really, like, super, super close to me. So the other day, and I was praying, it's like the Holy Spirit, told me ask like the holy spirit put it in my heart and i pray that i say god show me who this person is in the spirit i said god everybody around me and i mentioned their names i said show me who they are in the spirit and and i kept praying i kept praying about it for probably like a week or so i've been praying about it and god said it showing me in dreams who this person is, who this person is, who this person is, who this person is. And now, now I know who I'm fighting. Because that's what I'm saying. Sometimes you just don't know who you're fighting. You see this person, you're like, oh, this person loves me. They are close to me. They could be your mom. They could be your aunt. They could be anybody where you, I didn't know who I was fighting before until when I went to God, I said, God, show me who this person is. And I mentioned their names. And I said, show me who this person is in the spirit. Because it's not them. Like Pastor Matthew always says, it's the spirit behind them. So when God showed me who they were in the spirit, and now my, my, the way I pray is different. Now I know who I'm fighting. Now I know what I'm fighting. So sometimes it's not really you. Like you were saying that it's, you see the reflection of it's not really you sometimes. It's just we, we really don't know who we're fighting sometimes. So. Sorry, can I come in? The, um, you know, the, the word of God, it brings divine illumination. And you see, the, how you, you cannot really just decide based on, I'm not saying based on what you said, but most of the time we make decisions based on how people react or how we see people act around us. We can easily be like, oh, this one is... We see people, we tag like this one is a devil or something. Like, or people show us love, we be like, oh, this one is an angel. But the Bible says, do not be surprised. Satan himself can disguise as an angel of light. So when his, angel, his um, um, agents can do the same, when his agents do the same, do not be surprised. It's your discernment is what is going to have to come in place. Your discernment. You have to discern. You cannot make decisions based on how people react because most of the time they come in in love, but deep down, it's not what you see. They come in in the, or they, 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 you know. I can give you a personal. We, we had a, we had a, um, a prayer warrior. He was really close to us, you know, 
back, back, back then that we were praying. We, we know we do fasting with everything. We share everything together. But in the end, one day we were praying, and then he started confessing about so many things that he'd been doing. You know, but he was somebody that we were all together sharing secrets and praying together, having fasting and doing fasting to everything. But we look, we were, we were really, really close. But deep down in my spirit, we were always fighting in the spirit. Outside, we look like we are close, but deep down in the spirit, we're always fighting. So I was always praying against anything that is going on behind the spirit that I don't know. I was praying behind it, and then in the end, what I was feeling in my spirit, the spirit of God revealed it. He started confessing, and then I knew that's when I began to understand what I was feeling in my spirit about him. So discernment really is important as a believer, your discernment. You know, you know it's, good, it's good to mention that, and when you're talking about knowing... Discernment helps you when you need to know what spiritual battle you're dealing with. Uh, and in our own lives, we have to make sure when we're looking at uh, uh, sanctify, getting, getting ourselves set apart for, car, for Christ, we need to make sure that we, we uh, study ourselves and make sure that we know what, uh, put, pl- apply the word of God on ourselves. The devil will never send an agent to you against something that you don't give yourself into mm-hmm. uh in other words he won't he won't the uh, no enemy will come against you to spend a million dollars if you don't have a million dollars to spend he won't come so 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 uh he won't spend time trying to get you to steal if he don't see himself because he don't know that you have that propensity. You've been in that area before. So he, he, he the Bible talks about it, and James, he talks about that we, we, we that this thing called lust, and that's a whole other area. But lust opens us up to uh, drawing in that temptation of whoever that sin is toward us. So so if 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 the person that you're dealing with is open and they entertain lust for whatever those things are. They have to be careful because uh, what that does is it draws those spirits toward them and that spirit find home in them. So uh, opportunity will come. Somebody leave their pocketbook there. Opportunity will come that uh, uh, although you're married, this person is very nice to you. Although you... It will come if you, you, you're not married that this person that you trusted to be your friend and now they want to take it to another level and you aren't feeling that. And so, so uh, they'll challenge your Christianity and say give it up for one night of passion, you know, or, or whatever you want to call it. So, so uh, but, but if, you have attempt, if you have that tendency in you, the devil exposes that. If you have that in you, he looks for that in you. So the Bible, Bible one scripture we didn't go to in there, but it says it says about the devil comes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for places in us that are open to our weak in those areas. So that's why we have to continually pray. We have to continue to study the word. We can't give up one for the other. We have to continue to pray. We have to continue to study the word so that we can build ourselves up. Each one of us have areas where we're weak in. And because of that, no one is totally, totally full. Or Bible desires that we be complete in him. But that doesn't mean that completeness is going to stay there. You got it on day one, you got saved. You don't have to pray no more. You don't have to read the word no more. No, you have to continually study to show yourself approved. You have to continually pray. You have to continually empty yourself. That's why fasting is necessary. So it can reveal the stuff that's under us. So we're praying that, that, that uh, 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 as we talk about these things, God give us insight into where we are in our own lives. And we can give that to someone else. We want to thank all of you all for coming in today and being a part with us and our little family here. We thank you here at Action City. We just love the Lord. We love each other. We want to encourage each other. And we want to encourage you. 
If you're in the vicinity of Silver Spring, please feel free to be with us on Sunday mornings, 12-12-5, Beers Mill Road in Silver Spring, Maryland. You come out, you will see the sign that says, Action City Church, the house where God lives. We want to let you know that uh, we love you. And if you want to be a part of us, our service is Sunday morning at 10 o'clock a.m. I want to thank each one of our members for being here today. Thank you so much. God bless you. We'll see you again next time.